With world oil and coal reserves dwindling, countries like Australia, which used to hang their nuclear-free banners high, are now considering what was unthinkable, nuclear power. But nuclear-powered Sweden is going the other way, decommissioning their 10 reactors as soon as possible. But here's the problem. Even if Sweden shut down all its reactors this instant, it would still have four and a half thousand tonnes of high-level nuclear waste to get rid of. Obviously, it's highly toxic and there's lots of it. Right now, it's stored near here at an interim facility called CLAB. This is where all the spent nuclear fuel is kept for the first 30 years. But the waste stays toxic for up to 100,000 years. For now, this water provides a radiation shield and also helps to cool the rods. But they can't stay here forever. We've looked at shooting nuclear waste into space and dropping it into the deepest oceans. But the best bet so far seems to be burying it back in the Earth's crust. And that's easier said than done. Just a few kilometres from Clab, and directly beneath what looks like a high-class resort, the Swedes have dug a very, very deep hole to test the concept. It's called the Hard Rock Lab, and this labyrinth of subterranean roads and tunnels is a model for future burial sites. And it might just prove to be the most important laboratory ever built. Remember, high-level nuclear waste stays toxic for generations. And any leak, even this far underground, could be catastrophic. It's a long-term project, but we're dealing with a timescale that's almost inconceivable. It's impossible to imagine what life will be like 100,000 years in the future. So to put in perspective just how long that is, let's pace it out backwards. We've set out 100 flags 10 metres apart. The distance between each flag represents 1,000 years. So every step I take is 100 years back in time. Two steps back in time and Napoleon's army is tearing through Europe. Four steps and Shakespeare's sending the final draft of Hamlet off to the publishers. You get the picture. And I still have 996 steps to go. 20 steps and we're back in the time of Christ. 100 steps and we're in the last ice age. Oh, it's a long way. Now, if you're wondering what your ancestors were doing 100,000 years ago, our species, Homo sapiens, is thought to have just emerged from Africa. That's 4,000 generations ago. Think about it. That's backwards. Now cast your mind forwards 4,000 generations. Who knows what the world will be like? So decisions made now on nuclear waste are extremely important. We can't afford to get it wrong. Obviously, this is just a scale model, but scale is the operative word here. A full-size cast iron insert weighs 15 tonnes, and the copper sheath weighs 7 tonnes. All up, each empty canister costs about 100,000 euros, and they plan to make 4,500 of them. So we're looking at a grand total of almost half a billion euros just for the capsules. Six of those empty canisters are buried behind this concrete plug in the Hard Rock Lab. It's a 20-year trial aimed at testing how well they'll survive in Sweden's granite bedrock. Pending a thorough security check, this underground laboratory is open to the general public. In fact, it's become a local tourist attraction. The actual laboratory is 450 metres underground, which is almost the height of the world's tallest building in Taipei. So imagine I'm now in the penthouse and I'm catching this lift down to the ground floor. The granite walls I'm passing haven't moved in the last billion years, which makes this a good stable burial site. But it's also very wet and that's a problem. This water has taken 7,000 years to seep down from the surface through all this rock. Let's see how it tastes. Oh, salty. The danger is that it might contain corrosive chemicals that over time will eat through the canisters. And then it could also carry radioactive particles back to the surface. To protect them from water damage, 
they've surrounded the test canisters with bentonite. It's an extremely fine-grained absorbent clay, already used in everything from cosmetic facial masks to kitty litter. Sodium bentonite can absorb several hundred times its dry weight in water. When it takes up water, it swells, uh, moves outwards to the rock and seals off the initial slot we have between the bentonite and the rock, and also between the canister and the bentonite. So we get a very tight system uh, physically. It's hoped this bentonite buffer could even protect the canisters from future floods of fresh or salt water. So seas could rise and fall, and an ice age or two could come and go, and nothing would happen to these canisters. Uh, well, the rock above us, four or five hundred metres of rock, will certainly uh, protect us physically from impact from the surface. And uh, uh, the bentonite will protect the copper canister, and the copper canister will protect the, the spent fuel. And uh, as long as the copper is intact, nothing will escape from this system. That's all very reassuring. But microbiologist Carsten Pedersen is also testing for another, more unlikely, subterranean threat. Microbes. When you first came down here, I mean, this is 450 metres underground, they thought the environment was sterile. They didn't expect to find life. But in actual fact, this area is teeming with microbes. It is, it is. It, it's, uh, well, inside here we can have about 10 million organisms per litre of groundwater. So it's very, very densely inhabited. And those microbes also consume oxygen, which corrodes copper. So Carsten is doing tests to determine how much of a help or hindrance his microorganisms might be. So if nuclear power is really on the drawing board, and remember, it's at least a 100,000-year commitment, you can't dump it on anyone else.